Well, hello, viewers. You may recognize my face by now. Grandmaster Simon Williams here, bringing you your puzzle of the day. Now, this one is historically quite a brilliant puzzle and moment in history. It's taken from the last round and even the last move of the 2016 World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Sergei Karyakin. Now, the move that Magnus played in this position, which I'm hoping some of you might find, is a tremendous way to become world champion. It's the best ever end to a world championship match ever. A really sparkling and brilliant move. A lot of commentators actually at the time, uh, I'm not going to name any names, were a bit worried about Magnus's position here because if White doesn't find a good move in this position, Black is ready to pounce himself with a number of checkmates. Look at the White King, it's very exposed. So it's a very fine line between victory and defeat. But what move did Magnus now play? And remember, you can look at these solutions over on the chessboard site if you want to sort of cheat and go there quickly. I'll be bringing you the answer live in the show later on. And this must have felt so good to have played this move and also become world champion. I can only dream of such things. But maybe some of you out there who are watching this could even be a future world champion. Now, let's have a look at the solution. Well, I'm sure a lot of you know it. You have to play aggressively here, otherwise black is gonna checkmate you. So you've got to play quickly. And the move is this fantastic queen to h6 check. A uh, brilliant queen sacrifice. And whatever way black captures this queen is checkmate next move. King takes, rook to h8, checkmate. And if pawn takes, then there's rook takes f7, checkmate. So a stunning way to, like I mentioned, become world champion. We now come back to the Hastings competition and uh, a game again from the famous 1895 big international event in windy, rainy, but very adorable Hastings in the southern part of England. And this was a famous game, Steinitz versus Kurt von Bardelben. And the story goes with this, with this game that Steinitz, after his next series of moves, and they're quite phenomenal. And again, do have a think about this position here, not just the first move, but I want you to try and see the sequence of moves. Again, first move, great, but you've got to calculate it. The story goes that rather than resigning, Kurt left the table and he never came back. He might have hit some of those bars in the old town, drinking his sorrows away. But what a bad loser. Imagine that. You know, you're waiting for your opponent to resign and he just walks off, never to come back. Rude. So what is the finish? Rook takes e7. Again, the kind of move you should be looking for, a check, a capture, a forcing move. Now, the queen can't take this one because c8 does drop and white is simply a piece up here, the extra knight. And after king takes here, well, this is also very bad. And can you see how here? Can you see the way? Well, we can go rook here, check. If the king leaves the support of the queen, we simply win the queen. If the king comes backwards at all, then we have this very strong check. And if the king goes back to the e file, this double check, and now we can take that queen because of the ambush on the king. And if the king goes to d6, we can now chase the king in a number of ways here uh, to, to, to its finish. Can you see the best way of doing this? Well, queen b4 check is one way, or queen f4 check is another way of finishing this king off. And again, I'll let you look at some of these lines yourselves. I don't want to give everything away. You can have a look at this position and try to find the easiest win yourselves. Uh, also, let's remind you, this rook can come in. A couple of moves there. And I want you to, this is a good training exercise for you to look at each of these moves and work out which one you prefer. But let's go back to the actual game. Black instead played king to f8, relying on a back rank idea. And this is where we see a beautiful concept and that I can't remember being repeated again. It's kind of a windmill concept. White to play and now to win. 
where you can't take the queen because of the rook. Rook f7 check. And again, this rook can't be taken because of the rook bear. And now what is the killer move here? Rook g7 check. Phenomenal. Because what we're trying to do is put the king in a position where we take the queen with check. So we don't allow this one. For example, if we took the queen here, the tide has changed and we lose the game after that, that one. And after rook g7, that rook, as we've seen, cannot be captured. And after this one, rook h7, this is where black just disappeared. He didn't even resign. The rude bastard. And the point being, if the king goes back, you know now why this rook can't be taken, because either the rook bear drops or the queen drops. And if he does go back, the queen can now get into the position like this. And again, I'm going to let you guys just work this one out. I'll give you a little clue. It involves some queen checks there. But a beautiful combination there from Steinitz. And if you saw all of that, congratulations. Well, it was Philidor who said pawns are the soul of chess. And this next example is really using the pawns to devastating effect. Uh, a match played in 1834 between Alexander MacDonald and Louis Charles Mahay de la Borde. And uh, yeah, nice long name. Uh, and here, Louis Charles Mahay de la Borde finished in some style. Now, try to think how you'd play this position as black. And again, it's the sequence of moves, not just the first moves. Well, we start with queen e1, the most forcing move. This queen cannot be captured because obviously this is checkmate. I'll get a rook because it looks more flash. So the only move is rook c1. And I was hoping you saw this position. And now the pawns, d2. Look how devastating these beautiful pawns are. Again, if the queen is captured, I'll get a queen this time. This is clearly winning. So after the move d2, white now try to counterattack with this one. And the rook just slipped away. And here, rook to d1. And now e3. And this is very beautiful, very picturesque. And if you got this far, well done. That queen can't be taken, a bizarre position. And after queen c3, there's a number of ways to do this, but I really like what black did. He took on d1 and now e2. And this is one of the uh, most amusing final positions you'll ever see in a game of chess and you know, fantastic pawn power. It would be complete if there was another pawn on c2, but alas, uh, that didn't occur. But fantastic play uh, from Lewis there.